If you want to achieve anything in your life, you have to you have to work against the resistance. So re- resistance on, on when we are in the conditioned state, resistance is natural. Hello, yogis, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Dharma Talk. I'm your host, Henry Winslow, and this is episode number 47. That Finnish voice that you just heard in the intro audio clip was none other than Gokulakandra. Gokulakandra is a force to be reckoned with. If you've ever seen pictures of him online, then you know that this is a yogi who has absolutely mastered the physical form. But as you listen to this interview, you'll quickly learn that that's no longer the primary concern, if it ever even was, for Gokulakandra. He's much more concerned with energy and states of resistance, and that becomes a central topic of this conversation. We quickly get into the idea, a very traditional yoga concept of yukta vairagya, In other words, using our physical matter to connect to deep spiritual essence. We talk about our natural conditioned state of resistance as human beings and the importance in a yoga path and generally in life of going against the current, not going with the flow. We also talk about hidden knowledge and why Gokulakandra is careful about the methods and channels through which he transmits the lessons of his teachers. And if you stick around all the way till the end, we'll dive into a kind of surprise topic, his foray into music. And he's been quite prolific with that. We talk about why Gokulakandra's yoga teacher told him not to quit creating his electronic music and how we can all use the arts to elevate consciousness. So all of that is coming up very soon. Please stick around through these announcements, and we'll dive into my interview with Gokulakandra. This episode is brought to you in part by Yoga East Austin. This April, I'm super excited to partake in the upcoming Rocket Yoga training at Yoga East Austin. It's a five-day RYT, 50-hour practice intensive with Rocket Yoga pioneer David Kyle. David is a student of the late Rocket Yoga founder, Larry Schultz, who studied extensively with the father of Ashtanga Yoga, Patabi Joyce. If you're curious about Ashtanga or hand balancing, this training would be a great introduction since the rocket style tends to be a bit more loose and playful than traditional Ashtanga. Rocket takes postures from the second and third series and peppers them throughout a fun and dynamic sequence. David has been conducting trainings for over 15 years and has mentored some of my teachers, peers, and even past guests on this show, Yoshi Ohama and Yancy Scott Schwartz. Needless to say, I am pumped to dive into the rocket at my old stomping grounds at that, Yoga East Austin, from April 24th to 28th. If you're interested, save on early bird registration through February 17th. For more info, go to yogaeastaustin.com slash rocket. On February 15th through 18th, I'm co-leading the second immersion at Lighthouse Yoga School with Jared McCann and Aviad Sasi. On March 2nd, I am giving a workshop at Yoga Fitness Herald Square on vinyasa fundamentals or the sun salutations. So if either of those are of interest, head over to henrywins.com slash events. And for the immersion, don't forget to drop in the referral code henrywins to get 10% off your tuition. Okay, that's it. Please enjoy the interview. What's your purpose? What's your vision? What mark will you leave on this planet long after you're gone? I'm Henry Winslow, and you're listening to Dharma Talk, the only podcast where I interview inspirational yogis on how they're changing the world in their own unique ways. Whether you're still searching for your purpose or already walking the path, I hope these stories get you excited to live your dharma. 
Hello, Dharma Talk community, and welcome back to another episode. Today, I'm very pleased to have my new friend, Gokula Khandra, on the podcast. Gokula Khandra is a student and teacher of yoga and the founder of Gokul Yoga. Born Yanni Yatinen in Finland, Gokula Khandra Das started exploring the practice with Yanni Kuntala, a friend and lifelong teacher. He has been practicing yoga every day for 17 years and has integrated those spiritual practices into his life. In September 2012, Gokula Khandra moved to Malaysia with his wife, JC, to open Gokul Yoga Shala. Gokula Khandra, it is my honor to have you on Dharma Talk today. Thank you so much for giving some of your time to me and the listeners. And how are you? Thank you too, Henry. You know, I'm I'm good. It's a little, little bit tired. It's late here in Malaysia, but I'm okay. We are just running the teachers' training here, and it's been going well. And yeah, yeah. I'm, You're in the middle of teacher training right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are on the halfway. halfway okay. Through. Is this a a 200 hour program or 300? Yeah, uh, 200 hour hours. It's most mostly people. I already know who been like it's more like a it's a little bit not so formal formal training but yeah who been well if you already have a relationship with them then you don't have to put on any airs and pretend to be a certain thing no, no <laughs> any ice breaking or anything just, yeah just, just get right into business and filter, well, filters off yeah well, let's do the same thing with this podcast and dive right into it. I always start these interviews with the same first question, so I want to give you that one. The question is, okay. what does the word dharma mean to you, and what is your dharma as you understand it today? Oh, that's all how, how I understand the dharma. That's the like the essence, essence of the life, and then that's that's the. Same time, it's like, it's also like a goal of the life. Yeah, I, I see the I see the Dharma. It's a, it's as a sense, essence of our existence, and uh, and I see my own Dharma as so try to uh, try uh, try to uh, approach uh, like a spiritual goal of the life and life and try to understand who uh, like uh, my own spiritual essence you know what, what is my soul, uh, connection to the source of the life so i see the dharma in that way and uh, if it is both essence and goal how do you yeah. how do you reconcile that because you know from from my perspective if you look at the essence of something it's kind of unchanging but at the same time, a goal is something that you're constantly working toward, which involves movement and action and progress. So, how does that fit together? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's nice, nice perception. Is the, like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, according to Bhagavad Gita, we get the self is, self is eternal, and when, when. And that eternal self, we, we kind of lost the connection to that eternal e- eternal self. And the and and the yoga is the process. Yoga is the process to try to try to reconnect reconnect to that self and self. And that's why that's why this yoga yeah, this is the process process to co- try to connect uh, connect with that self. What is eternal there's no change change because if if something is eternal if it would change then that thing would be wouldn't be eternal anymore so so but what 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 is uh, what is now like a like a day what if when we are in this conditioned state when we are in this conditioned state then this is the process this is the process to try to understand that that self, and and that's how it's uh, and the, the, the and the process is dharma because that's that that process is taking us towards that which is our true essence. 
so so uh, so and that essence is eternal mm -hmm. they follow yeah that that's well put i understand what you mean now um and really that's that is what we're doing and when we practice yoga it's it's all about dharma and connecting to that essence so the movement is really only to get us closer to that part that doesn't move the part that doesn't change yeah 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 every everything around me as the this practice this is changing changing it's it's like they not they change it's eternal both about the spirit both the spirit and matter they are both eternal eternal and uh, and and spirit is eternal on uh, on its essence so that it doesn't change and this practice this matter around us that's also eternal but it's eternally evolving and now now we try to use uh, use this uh, and the principle of yukta Iraq, we try to use this matter this our material existence to try to reconnect that, that and eternal. what was that principle uh, it's uh, called yukta vairag uh, yukta means like a connect vairag means to and basically it means to disconnect i see to connect but so that so that you we, we we basically because now we are on the state now we are on a state that way where we like a like a we don't basically know ourselves we don't basically know ourselves you know all we know is that uh, basically the movement of our minds our physical body our environment senses and our environment and what environment so how it sounds very abstract to try to look for the soul look for the some spirit self because how, where do you look where do you look so so what we can do is is to use the process of yoga which is basically using the materials material things for the spiritual elevation like mind is matter mind is matter but my mind is the tool to, mind is the, the mind is the instrument to connect connect to the self when the mind the, the fluctuations of the mind when the wild that vibrations start to a little bit calm down it can reflect the self but mind you, know, you cannot connect with the mind you cannot connect with the self with the mind but still the mind is that instrument what you're using connected to the self although it's separated from the self mm -hmm. does it make sense yes and you know it's it's an interesting way of looking at things it's traditional in the yoga system to consider mind physical matter but for a lot of yeah, westerners yeah, and people who are un, unexposed the mind is like the closest thing to the self we have and yet while it is more subtle than the physical form it's still not it that's still not the the true self well, yeah, my mind, mind is mind is made, made from the three gunas. Your physical body is made from the three gunas, sattva, rajas, and tamas. It's the and prakriti, the matter, is according to yoga. The matter is nothing else than these three gunas. Same way, same way. Your mind, mind is uh, mind is the product of the three gunas. So mind is also matter. Mind is uh, like you say that mind is a little bit more subtle, subtle form of that matter, but it's still matter. <laughs> Same as and intellect, we can also separate the intellect, like a buddhi. That's also that's also that's even more subtle than mind, but that's also nothing else than three gunas. So technically, all the matter is three gunas. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. and you can tell that it's not that it's still matter because it's moving, it's changing, it's yeah, yeah, not it's eternal. Easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 constantly evol evolving. It doesn't. There's no stability, and the, and also the, there's no really connection to that it, uh, like eternity. If you if you observe if you observe the mind or even the intellect, intellect you cannot really we can we can we can intellectually try to uh, try to speculate the concept of eternity, but the intellect cannot really touch on that concept of the eternity. Because it's it's not really connected to that uh, that eternal nature of the soul, because that uh, and, uh, that intellect is all the time moving, so it cannot really uh, really understand it. it cannot cannot really grasp that concept. It cannot really realize that concept of eternity. <laughs> so, if we're able to use the movement of 
physical matter and, and the mind and the intellect to unlock or uncover or get a little glimpse of what is eternal movement is key you know it's key in the process i also know from uh taking some workshops with you that you're very big on the idea of resistance can you talk a little bit about the role of resistance in in yoga practice and what you teach oh like if you think about the the, the self Self is our, like a spiritual self, is our real self. And these, these like this uh, these physical body, like an energetical body, mental body, intellectual body, causal body, if the Karana Deha, if these, if these all are coverings of the self. So technically, technically, all our material existence is on one level, it's resistance to the self. So resistance is natural. Like a, like a, like a, if you want to achieve anything in your life, you have to, you have to work against the resistance. So re resistance on, on when we are in the conditioned state, resistance is natural. And also, also if you start, if you start, study the yoga, like a yoga, like a traditional, traditional yoga, you can, you can see that it's quite a bit based on that. For example, the principle of tapasya and vairagya, it means that. I have to uh, little bit discipline myself, which means that resistance is there. <laughs> right. Like all, all, to and, the and also the yeah, yeah, yeah. Resistance to the res uh, that kind of matter desires which takes us away from the yoga, but also like a like a controlling the mind itself to make the mind uh, stop the fluctuation of the mind. Uh, we. We have to work, and work is working means that we are co going a little bit against the current <laughs> sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, so, so this is this is this this condition state. This is this is now natural for us, and then right. the, that the spiritual existence, which is which should be natural for us, it's like a kind of little bit unnatural for us now. And when we try to approach this, then it's natural. There's a little bit of resistance because we are so used to, used to this, this like identify with the mind and identify with the senses and physical body or intellect. So this shows up at the at the greater, broader level of our lives and our desires and movement through the trajectory of life but it also shows up in our physical asana practice. Um, when I took your workshops, you had just an overwhelming wealth of knowledge about the marma points and all of these different little intricate bandhas. Goku Lakandra, what, what does your personal yoga practice look like? And how has it evolved or changed over time as you've practiced over the past 17 years? No, it doesn't. That you know, it, it haven't changed so much. Like a, like a, I have, I I have like a two hours mantra meditation, and and then we have the pran, the, then there's two hours like a pranayamas and pratyahars and dharanas, and then it, there's a there's uh, like a, some three hours asana practice. They this it haven't hasn't so much changed because it's. It's kind of, a, I've been working with the same people, same people, and, and it's the, like the same system. It's more like a building the depth on the thing, but it's, it's like, a, it's like a, the framework is, has been the same, same, basically. The structure has been this more or less the same. So. And is that the same structure that you teach your teacher trainees to go out and, and spread throughout the world? Uh, no, uh, it it just takes time to build build that depth. So it's it's a, it's the basis of the structure. It's the basis of the structure. It takes really like a to to make it to make it really click. It's it takes like a years of study, like a systematic study. It's because it's little you know it's a little bit complex. Little sure. bit more complex. It's not 
you cannot really make it. You can't teach it in two weeks? Two, three weeks. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, the, and also because there's they're like old, old like the, there's old basically like a hundred probably thousands of years old like a tradition behind this like it's quite orthodox in that sense so there's lots of like a uh, there's lots of like a depth on that that's right of, it's not it's not like a it's not it's not really custom and made made on this kind of you know that you do run the two two weeks course and you know people get the idea. It's just a little bit scratching the surface. Right. It's like scratching the surface. What is well, that it? brings up an interesting question, actually, about the the tradition and the, the kind of sacred aspect of the, these teachings. I remember when you came to teach workshops in New York and I attended that someone asked, mm -hmm. you know, is there is there a book out there that explain some of the concepts that we've been talking about, some of these very intricate um, energy locks and, and marma points and, and bandhas. And, and you said, n you know, no, there isn't. And while I could, probably, as as I I could probably profit <laughs> from writing one and, and people would be interested, I, it's, it's not responsible for me to do that. And I know that there is sort of, it's not that you don't want this information to be dispersed, but there is kind of a, um, a cautionary way of handling it. Could you talk a little bit about why, um, about this idea of, of hidden knowledge and, and why it's so important to protect the way that information is shared? It, it, it's basically respected. It's, it's, it's respected the tradition. You know, if someone takes lots of time, to like a, especially on this kind of, you know, like an old, old way, like a, which means basically being together like a, like a long, around, like a hundreds, maybe thousands of years being, being and they've been transferred from one person to other so that the essence and the ideas are still like on the pure form there, the, like they used to be. So it's it's kind of it's kind of my responsibility also to try to handle that carefully, so that you know, so that it's it's like a it stays like that because it works. It works. It I have personal experience that the, that it 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 works, and I have respect to my teachers. And they, and they like a, like a, they, they 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 have give give them lots of time time to try to teach me something. So why would I like a, why would I like a, like a mix it or take it take benefit from it and try to sell it to people for like a, just for money or uh, do you understand what I mean? I do, yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's so out of it, respect it, for it, it, all the yeah, knowledge yeah, it, that precedes it's you. It's about relationship. Yoga moves through the relationship, and and uh, and I I, I I have a nice relationship with my teachers, and uh, I'm grateful to them, and, and that, that that this information, that this uh, this this practice, what what they shared, they, it's been, I know that it's been around a long time, and it, it's been it's been protected. It's not there yet in online. Can Google, <laughs> so it's not so much on the online and now, but like it's just you know, it's just it's it benefits everyone. Everyone who practices benefits, but that they can be still touched on that, that uh, that uh, that tradition. That's because it's these traditions they are like a slowly disappearing. They are slowly disappearing, like in many ways. I think that's so, true. I think with the because, you because call, think, think, think about it. yeah people I combining think, things and, and mixing things things and changing things and bringing some other traditions in uh, in they they are like a like a they are just disappearing disappearing and then then soon we don't have connection to all these you know and they have lots of understanding like like you, you see these bandas and marmas and this kind of stuff this is just tip of the iceberg there's lots of like a like understanding, it's been built. They have been building it like a, like a centuries. There's lots of understanding. So, so who am I to change it? And it, it works. 
Well, it definitely works. Anyone who's works. who has seen has met you or they, seen, they, they seen your practice yeah. online would would know that you have a, definitely a mastery over the physical form, and anyone that's spoken to you would know that you have a mastery of the intellect as well. Um, so yes, this, it's very clear that it works. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit more about where you came from, you know, because we can look at you and see that you are a master of, of yoga asana and, and a master of this knowledge, but I'm certain that it hasn't always been that way. So how, how did you come to devote yourself to this practice so wholeheartedly? I just have this, like a, from, I have this kind of burn from, I don't know, from the childhood, I don't understand. Uh, and it, it like a, it like and it, it, when I came to the teenage years, she started to grow this kind of burn to understand that what is what is why I'm here, what is the meaning of life. Somehow it it was like a natural. I was looking for something, and then I somehow met people who who who, who kind of would answer to some of the questions, and they have also some practical practical tools how or like a, how I would, would start to call or like a, understand this understand understand my own existence and why I'm here what they, where I'm coming from where I'm going so so somehow yeah. somehow it's just you know it's that that's how like a like a I don't know, somehow I, I've been as long as I remember. I, I've been a little bit, you know, looking for something. And yoga, yoga starts there, like a yoga as a spiritual practice. It's just talk to me somehow. So, and when you first yeah. started, could you already tell that it was something that was going to feed you at least in the direction of, of finding those answers? Or did it take some patience to be rewarded with that? Yeah, yeah, I understood. They, it's uh, there was lots of th- stuff. What what was a little bit difficult to digest or understand first. But instead of just giving up or trying to push my own perception to, I thought that my, I give it a try. And and I'm still on the same path. <laughs> trying to understand somehow yeah i see that and there's what, lots of- what was one of those challenges what take us back to a moment where you were really um you you really struggled or you were presented with a challenge that tested your commitment to the path uh, well, I, I really didn't didn't uh, just just to be honest I, I didn't have some you know really I cannot say that there was something, you know, something really. Just some minor things, but but not. But it was quite easy for me because I I was really I was really looking for answers. So I was really, I was kind of willing to give up my own you know perception if if something gives you me answers. So somehow I was willing to give give up my perception. So it it was. I would take it basically took the attitude that I have nothing to lose, you know, I try it <laughs> and let's see how it works. So so I, I cannot say that there was something that was really, really like a heart. But like a- well, it's all a matter of perception, right? I think it's it, it's exactly, you know, the, what you said, if if you're that committed to 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 figuring out what it is that this practice is here to show you, then you're not going to be too concerned with anything that is presented as part of the path because it's there to, to take you in the right direction. So, you know, what you experience, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. there's some things that other people who n- might not have been as interested, they might've experienced as deep discomfort, pain or challenge, but it's all in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's it's kind of it's kind of relative, and yeah, and I understand that that it's it's not really like a it's not easy. There's lots of you know 
lots of stuff being very special in our many times from our cultural or like a cultural background state the yoga there's lots of stuff that we, it's maybe a little bit difficult to cope with mm -hmm. but but uh, but i uh personally i just yeah i just do it as a healthy challenge <laughs> yeah challenge is good instead, yeah 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 instead, instead of just you know you know yeah, like a giving up without trying it's you just take it like a little bit scientific approach you know if you don't try you don't know <laughs> example you know some mantras instead of just saying that you know this is not for me it's okay i try it for <laughs> one month you know. <laughs> let's see how it works <laughs> yeah <laughs> i also know i also know that uh Yoga is not the only um, uh, practice in which you've continued to create. You have a career in music as well. How did you get into your music? And um, have you learned anything from yoga that you've applied to your musicianship? Uh, yeah, that's that's just my you know from my you know my old old hobby and and I. I I I was like a I I had like a period that the just because somehow I, I I was growing in an environment where this kind of electronic music was <laughs> was like a certain genders of electronic music they were like a prominent my so uh, so uh, it kind of a little bit caught caught up on that I was willing to I was planning to give it up on one point but then one like a one teacher he says that you know you can use that also somehow to try to like a, help people but it's just it, many ways it's just my you know just some hobby hobby it doesn't have some you know like a it's just like a very humble Hobby it's, it's a hobby but it's something that you've been very prolific with i mean how, how many different albums have you put out uh i don't know it, it just you know i i do every day a few minutes and that's it <laughs> that's it it's just my you know small you're very you're very modest serious. i don't think it's too seriously i've been doing it so long long time so it's it's just you know you know like a I just I just keep on doing it. <laughs> it's not really like a but I, it's you, nice. It's nice. What did your teacher say that uh that encouraged you to keep it going when you were thinking of giving it up? He he says that I can use that as a, like a like a method of yuktavairaki. I can use that for some spiritual purpose purpose by you know somehow connecting or sampling some some like a spiritual teaching inside the <laughs> Inside the oh, like thing. dropping in subliminal messages. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you, so you can, you can actually a little bit subconscious way you can actually help people to elevate their consciousness. So I think it's, I think it's nice. You know, <laughs> that's a, that's an interesting like, idea. Did you ever do that? Did you drop some mantras and and underneath the uh, the drum and bass? I do it all the time. So it's, <laughs> that's why I do it because otherwise I wouldn't do it. I'm not like a like a. I don't have any. I, I don't know if I have any other reasons to do it. <laughs> That's so interesting. And I, now, now that I know that, I'm gonna go back to some of those songs and see if I can pick them out, pick out the mantras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can try. It. You can try. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a good challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but somehow. You can connect every. But you you can basically if you uh, if you like uh, if you paint or you write or you know you can use everything like uh, to elevate consciousness or bring the consciousness down. So we don't really really need to renounce the things. Things we just have to like uh, we have to find a way 
uh, many of things. So, of course, there's something very tamasic. Maybe I have to change, you know, some diet or something, you know, so that it's it's not like a, um, I don't cause violence to other living beings. The things I don't need to give up the things in order to practice yoga. If I if you have like natural if you have natural interest or something, a music or art or philosophy or something, we can use that that natural tendency to elevate our own consciousness and then help others as well. So that's like a that's how that, uh, that's basically that, that's how bhakti yoga works. We cannot really give up things. <laughs> How we can give up the world? You know, we are still in the world. You know, if I stop doing some, something, then I have to do something else. <laughs> so there's always like a, always so. So we can use that's yukta vairagya. To using the material things to try to elevate the consciousness. I so, see. No <laughs> yeah, in the in the Ashtanga system, they make a big deal of um, differentiating householders from uh, renunciates, but and in the way that you just explained it, even if you give up your whole, um, you know, cultural societal life, you're still taking something else up that's material. So what, you know, what difference does that really make? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's true. You give up, you give up your family and everything. Then you move, move the monastery, and then you have to have social relationship there in the monastery with the other people. You really, technically, you didn't really give up, you know. You just traded. You got a new family. Yeah, you just traded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, if it helps, if it helps, if it makes well, some cases, it, it can be good, good. But may, uh, like a sannyas, it's uh, like a dual word. Uh, Sun means uh, accept and nyas means to reject. So uh, sannyas means basically that I accept everything that uh, is elevating the con consciousness and then I give up everything that is like a, I, I become choose, pick and choose. That's Patanjali also speak about viveka, that uh, that uh, that when the, that discrimination arises, that I, I start to see that which kind of actions help to like elevate the consciousness. So I move in that direction, and then but I cannot really give up the, uh, like actions for good. You know, every, everyone is Bhagavad Gita explains this that everyone is for basically forced to act in this world because this world is changing all the time. You're all the time doing something. <laughs> you cannot stop doing, you cannot renounce. You cannot give up, <laughs> but I can use things. What, what I did previously, I was still doing things and they they actually caused me more bondage. They bring the consciousness down. Now, now I try to do it a little bit more intelligence way so that I try to somehow connect what I'm doing to the spiritual practice. And then it actually becomes liberated. What uh, like a, what we are doing? See, it it helps to like uh, elevate the consciousness. Do 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 you follow what I? Yeah, yeah. It's a matter of picking and discerning your actions so that you choose the ones that serve you on your path. And you yeah, know, yeah, 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 yeah. I it, can't it, speak it, for it, you, but I I feel good. like a big part of that for you is is teaching. Uh, pardon, can you repeat? What, what did you say? I said, I can't speak for you, but I, I imagine that, you know, some of the actions that you've chosen that are liberating for you are the ones relating to your teaching, teaching yoga. Yeah, no, but it's also, it's, it's, if you do it like a, like a more, like a, a traditional context, my teaching is service to my, Teachers, I, I really didn't have when I re, personally I, I didn't have like a like a so big burn to go to the front and teach, but but my my teacher put lots of time on me to help me with the practice, and then he asked me that can I help him to help others, and then I said ah, but okay, let's do it if that's. Yeah, if that's way I can pay back, that's been the way. Uh, like a, that's been my way to try to pay pay back what I have learned. So I take I take that as my service. Of course, I I, I little bit like it also. <laughs> yeah. Basically, I'm the, uh, I'm not 
like uh, I'm really like a, I like to stay on my own, own quite a lot. So, right. So the, I do understand the difference. It's not really my passion. It's not really my passion you know, <laughs> to get there in the front. Right. It's it's a service to your teachers but, but not, as much or more yeah, than. Yeah, yeah. Even, even, yeah, you know, students also. Yeah, you. That's the other side. You know, it's the service to the teachers, and then if I have something to help, I can help people. I'm happy to do that. It's nice. I like it's it's yoga is to serve you know you serve those you're learning from and then you serve the people who come to this practice <laughs> so it's you never it's always on the there has to be this mood of serving trying to help so for anyone who's listening to to this interview and is curious how to dive deeper in the the practices and, and studies that are part and parcel to to your practice what would you recommend oh, it, like a yeah that's a good question <laughs> so so i i, I think it's uh, that uh, like a like, like, uh, I think we should do like a little bit in, like an introspection before we jump into anything. But we we little bit like a turn in, and then ask ourselves that what what I really want want from my life and what 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 I, what I want to do do and like a try to. Try to like try to really a uh, little bit like a like a not too easily jump to something because it just looks interesting. Do you understand that that we, we should ask that would be this be, be a little bit like a benefit. So, but um, I, I welcome everyone if someone wants to practice. It's it's nice. It's, it's I'm happy to try to help help people. But yeah, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> So ask yourself, do you really want to do this or is it just an impulse? Yeah, 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 because like, a, yeah, yeah, it's, it's like, a, the, the, uh, this is like, it just take time. I, I try to just, you know, I, I try to help, like, I try to help people, but I also like, a, this is, this is just, this, this is like a taking time. To understand it's not very simple you you know you know you you you, you have been like a, again to like a, to the workshop you can see that it's not it's a little bit it's a little bit complex <laughs> so it's, it's a little bit complex <laughs> and, and yeah like yeah, yeah, yeah it's not really easy to understand it if i want to understand it it's i have to put the time on it right and like like a, otherwise it may be i just try to help people because otherwise it may be Make me just more confused. Mm. Right, and, and I think that you know maybe that has something to do with Is why. The you get the <laughs> yeah, and if your if your teachers have have kept this these teachings very close to the chest and and passed them only down through one on one face to face interaction, that's probably a part of the reason why you know without guidance and and proper uh, supervision it's easy to to get it mistaken and mix it up and, and just add to the confusion rather than really be of service yeah 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 you 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 got really understand that yeah yeah that that's how how it goes it's it's just it's it, it's not really it's not really made of, made for this this kind of culture little bit this kind of culture we are living now it's, it's not made for Google yeah. culture. Yeah, yeah, online. everything has to be fa fast and easy and simple and you know, you know, effective and thing. <laughs> you understand? It's more like you know, you really have to you know dedicate. You put put your time and your commitment, and you know, then it works. It works, but it just it's also takes quite a lot. Things like that these days are very rare. The maybe it was more common in another era but most 
things like that that take patience and time and discipline have have gone extinct. So it's really special yeah. if you can find something that you can hold on to like that. And I really admire you for for respecting your teachers in that way and 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 preserving, you know, the sanctity of of these teachings. So thank you. Thank you. I also have lots of you and I I like it really I, I, I really see that you are really like a introspective and intelligence. Well, I think practice. now is the perfect time to move on to the final section of this interview where it's going to be okay. light. I call this the prana round. So in, in this section of the interview, I'm going to ask you six quick questions and ask you to answer in minimum oh one word, maximum my one sentence. Very slow now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's try it how it goes. Okay. <laughs> okay, first question. In one word, one word only, why do you practice yoga? Uh, God. Nice. I haven't gotten that one yet, and I like that answer. That is great. What is your favorite yoga pose and why? Down dog. Uh, it's, you can learn so many things just by doing down dog. <laughs> it's always new. It's always new. <laughs> what is the Never single is. best a cue or piece of advice that you've ever received from a teacher? Uh, I don't know. One, one good is to service to others, mind your own business. To serve others, mind your own business. No, okay. no. Do service to others and mind your own business. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's that best, but that's, that's kind of cool. <laughs> Okay, recommend one book, either modern or ancient, for our listeners. Srila uh, Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. You can find it everywhere. You can find it everywhere. Okay. On it, it's even on Google. <laughs> huh? I said it's even on Google. Yeah, even on Google. Yeah. <laughs> Google is the new guru. Google, yes, Swami Google Nanda. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. He has all the answers. Is yoga for everyone? Yeah, yeah, I, I think yoga is for everyone, but it doesn't mean that everything is yoga. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think it's, but, but, but it's like a yoga also, like yoga has also like a, yoga is not just some bubble, bubble that, you know, I can put everything inside and then I you understand what I like or what is what sounds nice. It also has some, you know, you know, yoga is somehow also defined what is the yoga. So Right. It has boundaries. Yeah, it has boundaries. You understand? It's not just that everything is sun and yoga. Yoga. But yeah, I, I think it's everyone everyone who is uh, like trying to understand the self or understand the God. I think that's yoga is good for. Last question, how can our audience get in touch with you and how can we support you in your dharma? Like a tried I have I happy if people people help themselves they try to understand who they are like on front of who they if people try to approach the spirit spirit I think that, that that's very nice you know if people do that somehow you know, you know try to understand what that that who we really are and where we are coming from and yeah that's i think we are then we are a little bit connected with each other <laughs> and yeah i i feel happiness when i see people genuinely try to try to understand like a, try to rise above these like the, this kind of material conceptions of life I feel happiness, no matter what, where they are, or what is, what is the cultural, philosophical background. <laughs> is that okay? I think, you know, I think that's what, what we're all trying to do here. And, you know, that's my, that's really my purpose for creating this show is to give a platform to 
spiritual teachers and inspirational yoga practitioners and teachers like yourself, because I wanted a platform to be able to get new perspectives that would progress me on, on, on my spiritual path. And I think a lot of the reasons or a lot of the listeners have the same reason for, for tuning in. So go cool. Kondra, thank you so much for giving some of your time today. I know it's late in Malaysia. Thank you for connecting with me. And um, I hope that we can continue this conversation sometime in the future in person. Yeah. Yeah. I would be happy to. Thank you. Hey, Dharma Talk community. If you enjoyed this podcast and you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button right now. And if you'd like to show your support even more, leave me an honest review on iTunes or whatever podcast directory you listen on. You can also make a financial contribution to keep the show up and running, a donation at henrywins.com. And remember, I'm here to serve you. So if you have any questions or comments or ideas, you can always reach me on Instagram at Henry Wins. Otherwise, I'll speak to you next week. Keep living your dharma.